Hello everyone, welcome to my second Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add controls to your character using lo the logic bricks in Blender. Alright, the setup. So what you need for this tutorial is a few animations. You need a run animation for the character. You need one jump animation. You need a fall animation and a stand animation. So creating animations, I'm not going to go over that, that's out of the scope of this tutorial. I will be showing you how to add controls to the character. So, the first thing you should add is a property to the character. Now you should obviously have the armature selected, because that's what controls the character. So you add a property to the character. I'm also going to be assuming that you know the basics of Blender, um, switching to solid mode, textured mode. I'm just not going to be going over the basics in this tutorial. So adding a property, you should call this player state. This property is going to control the state. You'll know what this is for in later tutorials. I'm going to change this to integer so that the property only goes by numbers. And you should set this to 1. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed, I added a property to the platform over here. I called it platform. Now, the way I'm going to set up the character, every object that the player is going to be able to stand on should have the property platform. Because it would cause glitches if it didn't have the property platform. So, let's go back and select our armature here. So we have the player state property. I'm going to add another property. I'm going to call this jump. And change that to integer as well. Now this one you want to keep it at zero. So, I'm going to add the first brick here, a sensor. This is a collision sensor. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to sense the player's collision with the platform. So I'm going to, this is the property that the player is going to collide with. So I'm going to set this to platform, which is the property of the platform under the player. So the property is platform. And I'm, and I'm going to click invert. What this does is it does the opposite. So if you are going to, if you don't use invert, it's going to, it's only going to do the action that you set it to do when the player is in collision with the platform. If you use the invert button here, it's going to do the action when the player is not in collision with the platform. So, I'm going to add the controller. Just add an and. And you could even call this fall just to keep things organized. Fall. Fall. So you just need to connect this in order for it to work and add an action so I'm gonna call this fall so this is the what the action does is it plays at the animation that you created for the character so here I have a fall animation what the action con actuator is gonna do is it's gonna play this animation so I made this animation so that it would loop, so I'm going to select this from over here. Jester fall. So I'm just going to see where it starts. It starts at, it actually starts over here, but the actual fall animation starts on frame 21. And ends on frame 61, so I'm going to set this to 21. And I'm just going to move this one back so that it's at 60. Uh, it just makes the animation smoother. Priority, let's give it a priority of 5. Uh, priority is basically used to give uh, the animation a priority. So example, for example, if you are pressing the forward key and you press space, pri making the jump animation have a priority over the forward button makes it do the animation of the jump instead of doing the forward animation so that your character wouldn't be jumping and doing the run animation in the air. So the higher obviously the higher the uh, the lower the number the higher the priority so one would have priority over two so here I'm just gonna set this to five. Loop stop so this means that the animation is just gonna keep looping if the player keeps falling it's just gonna keep looping the animation repeating it until the player stops falling. If you set it to loop end, then it's going to finish the animation. After the player collides, it's still going to finish the animation 
one more time. So you just you want this to set this to loop stop. Blend in is let's set this to five. This is just uh, the transition from one animation to another, so that your character doesn't just suddenly enter a different pose. So it just makes the transition from an one animation to another smoother. So, and if you haven't noticed, one thing you want to do with your character is in the properties over here what you want to do is you want to set your character's physics to dynamic actor that's for the armature of course the mesh itself you want to keep that a ghost so that it would be it would be like a ghost it, it wouldn't have collision so that because if you if it has collision and your armature is has physics has bounds it's just going to create this weird effect it's not going to work out for you so you need to make the mesh that is parent to the armature a ghost so as you can see the different parts here are all ghost the buttons ghost so just to test this out I'm just going to go back to frame right, to frame one as you can see over here and now go to view camera I've already set up a camera press P to play or you could go from here and press game start there's the character he does the fall animation so that's basically the only action he does right now because that's the only logic we've added so I'm gonna go back and select the armature now what we want to do is make it so that when he collides with the platform he does he does the stand animation so add another collision sensor we're gonna call this stand the property if he collides with the platform of course so property platform and you need to make sure that the spelling is correct otherwise it's not gonna work so platform and connect call this stand add an action actuator connect it stand action gesture stand did I select stand? yes gestures stand loop stop I'm just gonna go back to drop sheet over here which shows the animations I'm just gonna go select gesture stand so you can see it starts at 1 and ends at 41 but I'm gonna set that to 40 so starts at 1 ends at 40 priority this should have a pretty low priority cuz because if you don't if you give it a higher priority than the run animation or the jump animation it's gonna keep doing that instead of the run animation or the jump animation or any other animation you might include such as an attack so we're gonna give that a priority of 9 blend in will make it 7 you can just experiment with different um, rates just to see how it goes so now let's test this out you don't really need to be in camera view you could test it out while you're in the 3d space so P to test you can see when he landed on the ground he starts doing the, l the stand animation if we move this platform he's just gonna keep falling let's move this up a bit as you can see okay so now our character does the fall animation he stands as well when he lands on the platform so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the basic forward movement controls so we want to have the same collision over here which indicates that the player is in collision with the platform we're gonna use that to add keyboard controls because what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a different speed for the characters jump so we're gonna set it so that if the player is in collision with a platform then if he clicks W it would actually perform the action if he's not in collision if he's in the air it wouldn't do the action so 
collision stand one also let's just change this to property uh, we want to make sure that it's on state one so that if the player is let's say state two would be pro the player state if it's set to two then the player is stunned then we want to make sure that it only he only walks when he's at pl state one so change this property to player state you can also notice that you may you might have noticed that this is a search so jump as you can see it's a search so if you have a lot of properties then it would be handy so equal make sure this is on equal value one because that's a default so now add the keyboard so let's stand state indicator we're gonna call that we're gonna call this forward the keyboard key we're gonna set this to W just cuz I like that WASD you can also do up arrow now to set this you just need to click the button so press a key W so we're gonna make this forward alright 